media type confusion might lead to certain types of attacks against applications like cross-site scripting. Applications can send all sorts of documents back to browsers. Applications will include a content type header in the HTTP response. The content type header tells the browser the nature of the content. For example, is it HTML, JavaScript, styles, or other types of content? The browser uses this information to correctly parse the document. If the content type is missing, browsers could execute content that is inside of the document mistakenly. So for example, if the content type were missing, or if the content type were set to an incorrect value, like plain text, the browser may try to guess at what the content is, make a mistake thinking that the content is executable, and then execute the content. So as an example, say there was a text file that happened to contain JavaScript. If the content type wasn't declared as text plain, the browser may get the idea that that JavaScript should be executed and go ahead and execute. This can leave the application vulnerable to path relative style sheet injection or cross-site scripting. So applications should always include the content type header and generally, most applications will do this automatically. However, there's a, another header, a companion, that isn't set by default, the X content type options header. And this header can have a value of no sniff, telling the browser that if there's any confusion not to execute the content and not to try to guess what the content is, but simply display the, the content on the screen. But how do we set this X content type options header? Well, as with all headers, we can allow the application to set it, or we can have the web server set it. The question we ask is, is this a global header that should be included in every response, or does the application need to set the header based on the context of the file itself? And for this header, we want to set it on every response. We don't want there to be any kind of confusion, regardless of what kind of file is returning back to the browser. The reason we would not set it in the application is because the application only responds to requests for pages with a file extension that it handles. So for example, PHP application handles PHP files, but it doesn't handle JavaScript files. To get full coverage, we want the web server to take care of adding the header when we want to make sure the header is included in each response. So we'll go ahead and set this in the header, header in the Apache server in this particular example. So we'll go to the directory where the Apache configs are. For ease, inside of here, I've created a headers.conf where I place headers. And so we'll put this in there. This file, headers.conf, is included in the main configuration by an include statement. So we'll copy this example here and then change the values. Like we saw on the slide, the value has to be no stiff and there's no space. And the name of the header is X content type options. You'll notice that there's hyphens between the different words.
In order to get the Apache server to read the configuration file, we'll restart the Apache service. Now we'll use a plugin like HTTP headers live to observe the headers. We could also use an interception proxy, Zap, Burp Suite, your choice. But we're just going to use this plugin because it is really good at, for looking at headers and it's a quick, easy way to do so. So the request goes out and then the response comes back from the server here. And we'll see that the X content type options has been added successfully right here in the response.